Why, hello everyone. I'm very small over here in the corner. Um, and because uh, we're going to be doing a, a very short, very superficial uh, discussion of MuseScore as a tool that you can use as a ukulele player. And um, so I'm over here. I have to be small in order for the rest of the screen to fit on. <laughs> and even at that, I have to disappear when it's time. So, uh, so it'll look weird here for a moment. Uh, just pretend that it, just pretend everything's normal. And it's weird that we're doing this on ukulele anyway. So I don't know. Everything seems to line up. Let me get the uh, this posted on the website. Website jollyrogerukulele.com. And I wait patiently for this to update. And I double check that the link is working, and then we'll run post it on Twitter, and then we'll get started. Um, uh, click, and it opens up Muse Score Workshop. Yes. All right. So we'll see what ends, actually ends up on the video today. I spent a good portion of today uh, fighting software. <laughs> so we'll see. Muse Score Workshop. Make your own. Make your own. I should say ukulele arrangements, huh? I guess it could be anything. Ukulele. Uku. Lele arrangements YouTube space h t h t t p s colon slash slash jolly roger ukulele dot com patience and the and the little guy hit tweet and but um we're done okay so we're on Twitter uh, we are on we've got websites working properly uh, we've got that. Um, hello everyone. Hey, I want you to grab your ukuleles first before we dig into Muse Score. I want to take just a moment, just 10 seconds, <laughs> nah, more than 10 seconds, to review your main shapes, your main shapes from yesterday. Don't get your paper out. Don't get your paper out. Okay, don't worry about yesterday's paper. We'll do it. Uh, Sandy's here. Lynn's here. Robin's here. Uh, I'm I'm very small over here. <laughs> uh, Lynn is here. Looking forward to this. Good. Bruce is in. Hey, Bruce. Uh, sound is good. Nancy's here. Ronnie's here. Amy's here. Pam's here. Carol's here. All right. So we're gonna talk very quick. And but before we talk about that, show me your C chord with your pinky. Okay. C chord with your pinky. Now let's go up this neck. so on right that's your movable C starts off at C and then C sharp D D sharp E and so on okay that's the most handy one let's look at your movable A so grab your middle and ring fingers and I know I'm small I had to I have to set the output device different and you can't fix it in the middle of a stream so I had to set it small <laughs> so uh, I know that I'm small <laughs> uh, yeah Vicky says I'm hoping to learn something today I am too Vicky <laughs> grab your movable a this is your regular a chord index and middle but when you need to move it you gotta use middle and ring let's go up this up the fretboard a chord move it up one it's a B flat move it up two it's B then a C and a D or C uh, whatever sharp C sharp <laughs> D B flat E all the way up there. Isn't that handy to have that E right there? Um, and then your other major movable chord is your F shape. Remember when we make an F, index and middle is what we usually do, but when we're going to move it around, middle and ring, let's go up the neck a little bit. F, F sharp, G, G sharp, or A flat, A, uh, A sharp, B flat, B, and then on seven it's a C. Okay. No, no, no. I'm small on purpose. <laughs> you should have seen me trying to figure this out. It's all about the video sizing, and in order to get the, my screen, my computer screen, to fit onto the video screen, I have to make me small and it big. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't see anything. Those are your major chords. Okay. Those are your three major movers. C shape, A shape, and F shape. Okay, so as you are thinking about that, um, you only need to know those three shapes and you know all of your major chords. Yay, pretty handy, right? All right, I'm going to put this down and I'm going to give you a very strange assignment. For some of you, this is not of interest to you at all. 
yet. And for others of you, um, hi, <laughs> hi, small cat. Um, uh, for some of you, this is of no interest. I'm, I don't, I will never ever write a song out myself. That's not, you don't know that. You don't know that. Okay. Um, and so I want to make sure that you feel like um, the day might come when you want to write a song out. And so to the, the, so I'm going to give you some tools. Whether you choose to work on them now or not is irrelevant. Um, uh, one or two of you out there is going to be like, yes, I am totally ready to write out Pop Goes the Weasel. <laughs> so um, I want to uh, switch to just discussion today okay and so in order to do that i think i got this figured out right i have to open this up and then i'm going to turn on my display screen blink and i get this really cool thing and then i wait and make sure it pops up over here properly and then i'm waiting for it to pop i'm way ahead of you guys in time 45 seconds or something so i just want to make sure this pops up correctly <laughs> and then we will move on to there we go okay it does pop up correctly so i'm going to close that down i am now going to wander away from our lovely chat and i'm going to talk about um, a few other things okay so on today's assignment jolly roger um and it's God willing and the crick don't rise. This is your this is what you did today, right? You scroll down to Tuesday. Hopefully you were able to get Muse score into your computer, downloaded it, and got it up and running. That's one of the that was one of your assignments today. If you did that, you've been successful. That was a huge deal. Second thing that we wanted you to be able to do was install it, open it up on your computer. The good news is it looks almost identical between um Macintosh and PC. So they've done a good job of, of really making it be the same program on both computers. Um, the third thing I wanted you to do is download Pop Goes the Weasel. This is the blank right here. Um, if you try to open it up, I broke PDF. It's not a PDF. Sorry about that. Um, uh, if you try to open it up, it doesn't open up unless you have MuseScore installed properly. And then, uh, so once you download that, once you've opened up MuseScore, um, you should be able to open up Pop Goes the Weasel. So those are the big hurdles that you got to get over on your own. I don't have the ability to help you with that. So let's run over to um, MuseScore and let's talk about it. So theoretically, and I'm going to double check our stream, um, you should now see on my computer um, the brand new um, open... Um, the shoot what the, what the heck happened here am i broadcasting still <laughs> hold on let me check i think i might have done a not a very uncool thing here um stream my content i, I am live right yes okay so i'm still live somehow <laughs> good loving let me click on this make sure i'm still actually where i think i am um the um geez louise sorry guys i just got to make sure that i didn't do what i think i did i'm pretty sure i didn't do my channel okay click here am i still live okay yes okay. yes okay still okay, still okay. All, right. all right so shut up shut up gary all right good so now here's what here's the next thing we're going to look at okay muse score um in Muse Score, it opens up like this. This is a brand new installation I did. Come back here. And the big thing that I think that you notice right off the bat is there's all sorts of mess, right? But there's only a few of these tools that you're going to really need to know. So the first thing I want to do is I want uh, to show you how to start a new document, but you're not probably ever going to start a new document once I tell you why. Okay, so on a new document, it'll open up, you put the title in, um, um, let's see, who, who we'll, we'll pick Cat Rules, okay, exclamation point, um, that's the name of our song, subtitle, composer, lyricist, copyright, you put all that stuff in there, you can click here, you can choose your instruments in the next dialog box, um, for, uh, for, for what we generally do, you're just going to put in a treble clef um, and click next, 
and then for uh, you you're going to pick the key that you want to write in i will tell you at least in the beginning work in the key of c which has no sharps or flats that's all this nonsense up here um, and so you want to work this magically starts in the key of c and when you're just messing around start there you can always go into seven flats if you want down the road uh, but it's not necessary right you on the next screen you can pick what timing it is so know which song you're on right if it's a three four or a four four song and then you can adjust this up or down to three or four um, and then pick up measure sometimes you need a pick up measure sometimes you don't what I do in my life is I don't use pick up measures anymore every time I always have a measure zero sometimes there's pickup notes in the measure zero and sometimes not um, and you'll see later on at some point in your life you're like oh it'd be really nice to have a couple of clicks a couple of cowbell clinks before I start having to play because you hit play and then you want to hear those cowbell things going while you're getting your ukulele up and running you can adjust how many uh, measures to put on it doesn't matter because you're going to change that for whatever the length of the song is and then if you want you can set a tempo here um, I usually do on the song just to, it helps me as a conductor and then you click finish and then you get your your title up here it says 120 just like that this would be a measure zero and so on now there's lots and lots of things here you can do with this but the, the key of course is that start just by that and then and then maybe go grab this quarter note here and and put, put you know start seeing if you can put them in you gotta click on notes quarter note let's put in some quarter notes let's do a little um, my dog has fleas my dog has fleas okay and then you can hit return and which is right up here and then you hit play And I'm not positive you can hear that or not, but that's 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 the essentials, right? That's it. That's the essentials. Get it open. Start sticking some notes in there, and then and then you hit return and you hit play, and you're like, all right, let's see how this sounds. Okay, and that's it. Um, now, that's the basics of getting it open, getting a few notes in, getting it and getting it up and running. Everything else we talk about is going to be ukulele specific, and so that's where I want you to. Um, let's go ahead and close out our, our lovely song called Cat Rules. Um, uh, let's get rid of that one, and let's open up the one that I sent you. So file, recent, Pop Goes the Weasel. All right, a couple of things here. If you wrote in and you decided later to change the name of the song, you can always just click in here, uh, Pop Goes the... Uh, Marvel. Let's pick a different animal. Pop goes the hippo. Pop, hippo. All right. So you can easily change the title anytime you want. Um, then the other thing that I did, I went ahead and put this in three eight timing. Uh, the way you would do that is over here on time signatures. Notice on the left hand side all these down arrows. If you click at the down arrow on time signatures, here's the main time signatures that you would use. Isn't that convenient? That's really, really handy to have that there. And of course you can click more and it'll give you a few more. And you can go down here and create your own time signature. So we talk uh, often that my biggest problem with strum along uh, groups is they don't tell you what what the temp, what the time signature of the song is and so you're not sure right off the bat there are always these weirdo songs from Appalachia you've never heard of um, is that a three song is it a four beat is it a seven beat you know you don't know and so but so that to me is super important that you can immediately fix your time signature so when you're messing around you can try this in different time signatures. You're gonna the, your homework tonight will be just to just to duplicate the work that I've done down here. I gave you a bunch of um, blank spaces to hopefully give you a chance just to mess around with it and see if it works. Um, uh, I'm seeing that I'm getting a text and I'm wondering if it's valid. Uh, no, we're good. Um, the other thing over here, the key signature. If you start to put in a song. Before you start typing it in, make sure you know whether it's one flat, one sharp, two sharps, three sharps, and so on, or one flat, two flat, and three flat, and they do them backwards here for some reason. Um, but make sure when you're when you very first start typing in a song, the two things that are going to matter is what is the time signature, 
is in this case it's 3 8 and what is the key signature and in this case there is no sharps or flats so we're in the key of C which is kind of cute because this song is actually going to show up in the key of G okay so you see G D G G G and all that so that's going to be there when you start typing in your own songs those are the two most important things by the way, if you were to accidentally delete any of these over here, and then there will come a point when you realize, I am never ever going to use, I don't know, the, the tempo tool or the bar line tool. I'm just, you can turn these off. You can go here and you can hide the palette. Okay. Uh, the other thing, um, and you're going to have to do this as you work on a ukulele piece, you're going to have to add a palette, and you're going to have to go down here to fretboard diagrams and click add. Okay, so the palettes, and so now I've added, it says added exclamation point, and so when I close that, you'll see up here your fretboard diagrams show up here, and again, if I hit the down arrow, there's all my fretboard diagrams. I will point out they're always guitar ones, and you're going to have to start your own library of ukulele ones. Uh, MuseScore only knows a few, um, and that's helpful if you're a guitarist and you're only going to sing and strum. But for all the rest of you, one way or another, you're going to have to eventually create your own fretboard diagram. So just get comfy with that, and I'll show you how to do that in here in just a second. Okay, so we've added fretboard diagrams to your palettes. And the palettes, think of it as just like an artist. Um, these are the things, these are your tools or your paintbrushes over here, and you're going to be using them over here. Now, the when you're entering notes up here um well let me let me back up just a bit rather than starting with a blank slate every time you're probably going to want to start with this ukulele blank this pop goes the weasel blank uh, and it's now it's bothering me that it says hippo here so i'm going to fix that um w a s e l um you probably want to pull this up, save it as the name of the song you're working on, and then start with this blank, because otherwise you're going to have to always add on the ukulele tablature and blah, blah, blah. That's all very much kind of annoying. Um, and so even in my professional software, I do that. I have a ukulele blank. I open it up every single time I start a new document. Um, rather than going from scratch where the, the, you know these software companies have to make a bunch of assumptions about what type of user you are, and they are not assuming that you're a ukulele player. <laughs> That's one thing we know for sure. They don't they they're assuming you're you know playing I don't know trumpet or piano or something uh, but ukulele is a more complicated instrument and so you have to always put in this tablature stuff now let me go into um, a couple of things one when you're ready to enter notes you click on this N up here okay and that activates this uh, bar up here notice here one two three four these are layers you can have multiple notes on top of each other if you want probably in the beginning i wouldn't recommend using that um, but you can you've got your 30 second notes 16th notes eighth notes quarter notes half notes whole notes and dotted notes so if i were going to put a dotted quarter note on i'd click both of these i would scroll down to wherever i'm going to put it i say all right i need a g note there click on it shows up okay and if i want to do an f here if i want to do an e right they all show up just lovely there um, and um, so mess around with that okay the other thing on this blank one of the things I'd love for you to do this tonight is all right I'm gonna create a tough uke version of this oh um, and it's dun 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 da 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 dum da dum 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 da 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 dum 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 da 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 dum bum bum ba dum Bum. That's the song you're working on. But what we're really working on, which you guys have been working on all summer, is creating a um, tough uke version. So my first note is a three. It's under a G chord. I'm going to add a zero. Whoops. Control Z. And I'm going to add a two. Okay. And then under here, whoops. Can I hit Control Z? You're going to hit Control Z a lot. <laughs> Every time you make a mistake, don't worry about it. Just hit Control Z and you go back. And you're going to put it as there and then this is a D chord right but it's a quarter note so I gotta get a quarter note under there I'm gonna put two uh, two and then I got an eighth note here so I'm gonna put some twos under there oops control Z make this a two 
Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my G note, and they're all eighth notes. So I've got my eighth note tool. Oh, two, three, two, right? Two, two, three. And then I got a five, but it's still a G chord, so I'll put zero, two, three under here. And then I got another two, so zero, two, and three. Okay, so I'm busy writing out my tough uke arrangement. Oops, control Z. And again, don't feel, you're going to make mistakes. It's, uh, um, I'm trying to go quickly here, I'm making a ton of mistakes. Um, but just think about, all right, I'm going to, I've got an eighth note here. I'm going to add in some accompaniment here. Put a zero there. And the same thing here. I got zero, two there. And then I'm going to have put some quarter note in front of that. Okay, and so on. So I won't do the whole thing, but you see what I'm up to there. I can just add in my tough uke right underneath the melody line. Um, if you are working along and you're like, okay, I got what I think I need, you can turn your note entering tool off. You can highlight this here um, and use your uh, shift key and then just drag, whoops, take this here. Yeah, oh, come on. Blink. Blink, 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 and then I can drag and drop this. The array, oh, let's just copy paste it, copy, and then I can paste it onto my uh, ukulele sheet music, and it magically puts that in there. Okay. Now one of the things is that you also notice is putting in these bar lines. I have I tend to take these things off, um, and um, I can show you if, if these are these are basically stems, and you can go into your tablature um, thing and turn those off. Um, but as you mess around with it today, I thought you know let's have it turn on so you can see what those are, and then maybe figure out how to turn those off because usually those you don't need these lines down here when you have the actual notes up here. Other things to talk about, over here is called the inspector. I recommend you leave this box open because lots of times it's going to give you tools that you need to do stuff like this. If I'm going to work on this G chord, um, it, this pops up and I can choose uh, whether it's going to be visible or not visible. I can choose this. Um, if I want it to be on guitar, I can change it to six strings and then down here, um, I could change it, you know, I could add my, some extra fingerings or whatever I want or not, right? And so you can do all that down here. Um, and um, when you put in a guitar chord, you're going to have to change it to a ukulele chord. So that's what the inspector does over here is it'll allow you to design your chords you know, in a cool way, okay? Now, once you design your chords, you probably want to save them over in your fretboard diagrams. And I think it's Control Shift, you click and hold, I think, and then you can just drag it over there. Now I have my G chord over here, and I can go delete my uh, right click. I can delete the guitar chord one if I'm never going to use that. Okay, and so eventually you'd have your whole entire chord library over here just by control shift dragging and dropping it into those boxes. On this piece of music, I gave you G, D, a bunch of G chords, a D chord, and so on. Um, and then if I um, go through and delete this little mess that I made here, okay, shift and get rid of that. Um, cut. Um, what I have done is I put on the chords, I put on the regular notation, I've used the text tool, um, you know, tools, uh, is it tools? Add text lyrics down here, and it says Control L. So if you want to add lyrics, you can just hit Control L, click on the notes you want to start adding, and then you can type them in just easy, easy peasy. Um, so what I would love for you to do tonight, you could simply copy paste all of this over here and stick it in down here. But I would much rather you do that go through the same process I went through. Type in the notes. You can copy my notes, right? Copy them in and then put in your lyrics and then put in your ukulele notes and then do your tough uke arrangement and all of that stuff so that it'll, it'll basically play. Um, the whole song and then starting here you can repeat the song again so play it through twice you can change the lyrics if you want um, 
and that would probably be an excellent adventure for you. Um, might not take one night, right? When you're first starting up in arranging sheet music, it, well, I spent about five years <laughs> getting where I was pretty comfy with writing in the software that I do use. And when I switched over to this software today, I'm pretty comfortable with it. I, I can figure most stuff out, but even still, I spend an, spent an inordinate amount of time with Google opening the other window and saying, how do I put in this and how do I do this? So the, when I'm all done with this, I've started with nothing. I typed in the notes to Pop Goes the Weasel. I typed in the lyrics. I figured out how to put the chords on above here. I've now typed in my tablature and I've added in my tough uke. And then when I hit re return and I hit play, Okay, so and then it'll just keep playing along, but isn't that handy? And you can grab, start with Pop Goes the Weasel because it's short and relatively straightforward, um, and try creating a second, turn, second one of those right down here on the bottom, so that you have a chance to play um, through. Well, it's to solve all of your problems. And again, don't hesitate. Google's your friend with this program. You just t type in Muse Score. How do you enter notes? Muse score, how do you do fretboards? Muse score, how do you add a ukulele line? Uh, Muse score, blah, blah, blah. And, it, and, there be, and there's a ton of resources out there, which is really, really nice. And it's all just sitting out for free everywhere you go. Um, do know that when you're all done, um, you can save this as a regular score rather than just that. You can export it file, um, export um, as a PDF. You can do all that stuff here. Um, and um, export it as regular sheet music. Um, and so your goal, I think, tonight, or, or over the, you know, whenever you're ready, um, is to just do your first song from scratch by just copying my song. Don't copy paste it, but actually go through and do all of the individual pieces. Um, I think that for free, this program is absolutely amazing. And, um, you know, it, like any software programs, it takes a little bit of work to get it up and running. But I do think overall um, it's super, super handy to have something that's free and this good. All right, I'm going to uh, leave it there since we're out of time. And I'm going to turn off that display capture off and here I am again <laughs> and then um, I'm gonna go over here and see um, how did I put the numbers um, I used my I only have my laptop keyboard um, but if you use C and D though those get you two and three you'll probably have to experiment around with which ones um, you do Let's see, I'm gonna scroll back here. I'm just now returning back to the um, broadcast chat. Uh, let's see, does this work on iPads? Um, I don't think it works on an iPad. I don't think they have an iPad version. Um, Sandy says I'm live. I think I couldn't do it on the iPad. I had to put it on the computer. Yeah, I think it's set for Macintosh, um, regular Macintosh or PC. Um, Patricia's here, Ronnie. Uh, cool. Not working for me today. I am on Chromebook. Not sure if that's what might be. I don't know about that. Uh, and how did you put in the numbers? So again, just mess around with this idea a little bit today and see if you can find um, some meaning in it. Again, not for everybody. It's just for those of you who are thinking, yeah, I would like to write a song out from scratch <laughs> and especially you know if you've got an old hymnal that has a song in there that you love there's no chance of that I'm ever going to accidentally type that song up for you it's going to be on you or if you have an old book of cowboy songs you know you, you those aren't going to just happen you have to do it uh, if you have uh, um, if you have um, music from 1970 by ABBA. Nobody's going to do that music, right? That's stupid. Um, so you're the one who's going to have to type it up. I'm kidding. I know. Mama Mia, whatever. Um, but so uh, this would be an adventure for you to start creating your own sheet music. You've, we've spent the entire summer time about lead sheets and that and so on. So tomorrow what I'd like to do, if you have messing around with it, come bring your questions in um, and see what works for you, what doesn't. And then as best I can, I'm not a t I won't be able to help you out technically, but I will be able to help you out with um, how to 
run this software generally speaking but again I'm okay on this but Google is way better at it than that and so if you have questions just ask Google Muse score and then whatever your question is and, and Google will provide for you I had no problem finding the answers to everything I need their handbook is a little dicey it's a little iffy so um, there's that now because I have managed to goof up um, everything on the stream here I can't even tell if who's here and who's not <laughs> um, but thank you all for being here and um, 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 it looks like it looks like for the most part you guys made it through. Uh, usually Chromebooks don't have hard drives, so you usually can't download programs onto a Chromebook. You have to use a web version of the software. Yeah, and again, guys, I know um, all of you have individual technical issues, but yeah, this should be. It's totally free. Don't to let MuseScore talk you into paying for that stuff until you're ready to publish, right? And then you have to pay a fee. Um, I re-enter two songs with my Chrome. Okay, so it, it is working. Uh, it seems easy if you know what you're doing. And I don't know what I'm doing on this software. That's a great point, Elizabeth. It's not easy. I don't know what I'm doing. But when you get to, hey, now I need to enter notes. How do I do that? Right? Um, okay, works on the apps. Oh, there's Chromebook in the App Store. Okay, Ronnie says she's up for it. Uh, lost inspector, but already Googled the answer. There you go, right? Are you saving this lesson somewhere? It'll be on uh, YouTube, just like anything else is, uh, Elizabeth. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, we'll continue to work on this. Um, again, I, I don't use this software on a daily basis. I use Finale, which is the professional level, and I don't recommend it unless you're going to be a professional level arranger. Um, but uh, but for free, this thing is miraculous and wonderful. And uh, if, see if you can get it to work only if you're interested in, in writing some arrangements for ukulele. And if, you, if it's not your bag, that's perfectly fine. So, all right. I'm off to Harmonica, and uh, we have a new By the Light of the Silvery Moon for Harmonica. I'm super excited. I hope I wrote it right, and I will see all of y'all tomorrow. Please bring your questions. Show up a little bit early. I'm going to put some piece of sheet music up there for us to work on, just to just to play and uh, um, and start to start that gentle slide into home plate uh, that's coming up on Friday. So um, I will see all y'all tomorrow. Thanks for being here. I'm going to pull the plug. I have no idea when to pull the plug, so I'm going to let the thing run out for about 30 seconds, and then I'll pull the plug. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys. Peace.